Hello and welcome to this short little video demonstration of the Fuel Tanks Plus mod and how it has changed in the 1.0 world. You'll notice that I have a filter extensions mod installed here. This will make the menus look a little different than you're used to if you play a mostly stock game. However, this does give me the option here of going to the Manufacturers tab and to a convenient little icon right here for the Fuel Tanks Plus mod. I'm going to sort by mass because that'll make, make it a little easier for me to find all of the parts I want to show to you. Now the primary thing that has changed in this mod since the pre 1.0 versions is that all of the tanks of same size have been consolidated into individual menu options here. It used to be that if you wanted to use a, a fuel tank that the co various color options of that tank were all separate parts. Now those have been consolidated together so that you can use a tweakable to select the color that you want. I'm going to start at the low end here and talk first about the 0.625 meter tanks, which come in a variety of lengths here, as I can show you. There's several of these, but I'm only going to pull out a few. These start with this gray and red color scheme. However, you can use the tweakable buttons here to select other colors, such as white, checkered, or black. This can also select the types of propellants that are stored starting with the standard liquid fuel and oxidizer, but also being able to choose just liquid fuel or oxidizer alone, or even xenon gas. Getting into the larger tanks, such as 1.25 meter, these tanks do not have xenon gas in them. However, you can also still select between liquid fuel or oxidizer alone, or both of them as standard. These also have multiple color choices, defaulting to white. However, you can select checkered, black, or a Soyuz inspired green and copper color and back to white. Now these also have nose cones that are available such as the straight one and a slanted nose cone. These also support all of the colors as you can see here. Moving on to the next size we have the two and a half meter tanks which show up in the menu as orange by default. You'll see that it starts with orange here and we also have the appropriate nose cones and bottom domes for these as well so that you can make external fuel tanks much like the space shuttle if you choose to do so. These can also select between liquid fuel and oxidizer in combination or alone but they also have multiple color choices such as starting with the orange moving on to white, checkered, black, blue, and a red brown color. You'll also notice that some of these colors work very nicely together. For instance if I select a white nose cone it works well with the, the white tank but this will also work just as well with something like the blue tank that has white ends to it, even though we also have a choice of using a tank that is matching it more directly. This gives you a little bit of an option to mix and match the colors the way you wish and not be entirely limited in how you decide to design your, design your rocket. Now moving on to the largest size, we also have 3.75 meter tanks. And you'll find that most of these lengths have tanks that are designed to be either one and a half to two times the length of the standard default tanks. This tank is double the length of the largest tank that the stock game provides. Likewise, the longest of the two and a half meter tanks is the same length as this as well. It is double the length of the stock jumbo two and a half meter tank. Now these large 3.75 meter tanks also have multiple color options defaulting to this silver and black color scheme that you see here. But it can also cycle through white, black and white, entirely black, orange, and a tan color that is somewhat reminiscent of the Ariane rockets. And then of course back to the silver and black that we started with. Now these come in a variety of lengths mostly the long lengths that I talked about previously. However, most of these diameters also include an ultra short tank as well. This is the short three and a half, or I'm sorry, 3.75 meter tank. It has all of the same color combinations as well that you can cycle through here and cycle through the propellant types. We also have these in two and a half meters as well as one and a quarter meters. And we also have one in 0.625 meters. You'll notice also as I attach these that there is a cover plate that, it's, that appears automatically. All of these tanks are designed to have an automatic shroud that will cover the ends of them when you attach them to something that is of a mismatched diameter. Technically the shroud is always there as long as it's connected to something, but this is when you're going to see it. Now there are two last categories that I, that I want to go over, actually three categories that I want to go over briefly. 
One of the nuclear tanks, so-called because it unlocks with the nuclear engine in the tech tree. And they, these were included initially as an intended fuel source for the nuclear engine specifically by including only liquid fuel. However, now that you can select the fuels on these, these are going to remain single propellant tanks. So you can never have liquid fuel and oxidizer in this particular type of tank at the same time. However, they can have liquid fuel or oxidizer or xenon or monopropellant or even ore. So these will actually double as large ore storage tanks or you can use them as large monopropellant tanks. This particular one is the 3.75 meter tank. However, we also have a variety of two and a half meter sized tanks for this. And these also come in 1.25 meter variants as well. So you have a variety of size options to select from when using these types of tanks. Once again, these are single propellant, however. So if you were to try to power a rocket with these, you would need two of the same size tank. The, their capacity, capacities are conveniently designed so that two of the same size tanks set with one to liquid fuel and the other to oxidizer, they will have the correct proportion of storage to make sure that they will power a rocket properly. Now the last category that I'm going to go over briefly are the radial tanks before getting on to the probe tanks. These come in three sizes, small, medium, and large. These default to mono propellant, which is indicated by the yellow bands that are on them. However, you can cycle through these as well. The color is selected by choosing the fuel tank, or the fuel type that is within it. These have black for liquid, liquid fuel and oxidizer, red for just liquid fuel, blue for just oxidizer, and back to gold for just mono propellant. Now the last category I will cover is these probe tanks. These come in a variety of sizes. We have three cubed CubeSat tanks. These can be silver or gold. You can choose those colors. And the propellants can be either liquid fuel and oxidizer, or xenon gas, or monopropellant. We have, there's also a hexagonal or truncated triangle sort of design as well. And it has the same options as well. You can choose the colors and the propellants independently on these, just like most of the other tanks. So this has been a very quick tour of how Fuel Tanks Plus is working in the post 1.0 world. And most notably, the changes since the previous versions are the consolidation of the tanks into tweakable options that you can select to select the colors as well as the fuel types independently of one another. I hope you've enjoyed this video and found it enlightening, and I look forward to seeing what you can construct using these fuel tanks. Thanks for watching.